Once upon a time, there lived a stone cutter who went every day to a great rock in the side of a big mountain. There he cut out slabs for houses and pavements and stone walls. He understood very well the kinds of stones wanted for different purposes. And as he was a very careful, very skilled workman, he had plenty of customers. So for a long time, he was quite happy and contented, and he asked for nothing better than what he had. In the mountain dwelt a spirit, which now and then appeared to workmen and helped them in many ways to become rich and prosperous. The stonecutter, however, had never seen this spirit and only shook his head with an air of disbelief whenever anyone spoke of it. Then one day the stonecutter was carrying some stones to the house of a very rich man and while at his estate, he saw there all sorts of beautiful things of which he had never even dreamed. Suddenly, his daily work seemed to grow harder and heavier, and he said to himself, If only I were such a rich man, I could sleep in a bed with silken curtains and golden tassels, how happy I should be. And a mysterious voice then replied to him, Your wish is heard, a rich man you shall be. At the sound of the voice, the stone cutter looked around, but could see nobody. He thought it was all his fancy, so he picked up his tools and went home. But when he reached the land where his little wooden hut once stood, there was now a stately palace filled with splendid furniture, and most splendid of all was the bed, in every respect like the one he had envied. He was now overcome with joy, and soon, in his new life, his old life was forgotten. It was now the beginning of summer, and each day the sun blazed more fiercely. One morning the heat was so great that the stone cutter could scarcely breathe, so he decided he would stay home, sheltered, until nightfall. He was a rather dull man, for he had never learned how to amuse himself. He had simply spent his life working. So now, with nothing else to do, he peeped through his blinds to see what was going on in the street, to see exactly what he was missing. And just then, a little carriage passed by, drawn by servants dressed in blue and silver. And in the carriage sat a prince. Over his head a golden umbrella was held to protect him from the sun's rays. If only I were a prince, he said to himself as the carriage vanquished around the corner. If only I were a prince, I could go out, even on the hottest of days, in a carriage and have a golden umbrella held over me. How happy I should be! And the voice of the mountain spirit replied to him, Your wish is heard, a prince you shall be. And a prince he was. Before his carriage rode one company of men, and another rode behind it. Servants dressed in scarlet and gold bore him along. 
The coveted umbrella was held over his head. Everything his heart could desire was his. But soon it was not enough. He looked around still for something to wish for, and when he saw that in spite of the water his servants poured on his grass every morning, the sun's rays still scorched it. He cried in anger, The sun is mightier than I. If only I were the sun, how happy I should be. And the voice of the mountain spirit replied to him, Your wish is heard, the sun you shall be. And the sun he was, and he felt himself proud in his power. He shot his beams above and below, on earth and in heaven. He burnt up the grass in the fields. He scorched the faces of princes as well as of poorer folk. But in a short time he began to grow tired of his might, for there seemed nothing left for him to do. Discontent once more filled his soul. Then when a cloud covered his face and hid the earth from him, the sun cried in his anger, Does the cloud hold captive my rays? Is it mightier than I? If only I were a cloud, mightier than any, how happy I should be. And the voice of the mountain spirit replied to him, Your wish is heard, a cloud you shall be. And a cloud he was, and he lay between the sun and the earth. He caught the sun's beams and held them, and to his joy the earth grew green again, and flowers blossomed. But that was not enough for him, and for days and weeks he poured forth rain till the rivers overflowed their banks, and the crops of rice stood in water. Towns and villages were destroyed by the power of the rain, and only the great rock on the mountainside remained unmoved. The cloud was amazed at the sight and cried in wonder, Is the rock then mightier than I? If only I were the rock, how happy I should be! And the voice of the mountain spirit replied to him, Your wish is heard, the rock you shall be. And the rock he was, gloried in his power. Proudly he stood, and neither the heat of the sun nor the force of the rain could move him. He said to himself, This is better than all. But then, one day, he heard a strange noise at his feet, and when he looked down to see what it could be, he saw a lowly stone cutter driving tools into his surface. As he looked upon him, a trembling feeling ran all through the rock, and a great block broke off of his side and fell to the ground. He cried in his wrath, Is a mere child of earth mightier than a rock? If only I were a stone cutter, how happy I should be! And the voice of the mountain spirit replied once again, Your wish is heard, a stone cutter once more you shall be. And a stone-cutter he was, and in the sweat of his brow he toiled again at his trade. His bed was hard, and his food scanty, but he had learned to be satisfied with it, and he did not long to be something or somebody else. And as he never asked for things that he didn't have, 
or desire to be greater and mightier than other people. He was happy at last, and he heard the voice of the mountain spirit no longer.